Let's also follow up a lot of follow up stories today. We'll follow up on the Daisy Coleman rape case. We reported earlier last week about how an article came out in a local paper in Kansas. Uh, in, uh, I don't remember if it was Kansas or Missouri. It might have been the Kansas City Star, if I recall correctly, talking about how charges were dropped against the uh, alleged rapist in the case of then 14 year old Daisy Coleman. There were implications that because the 17 year old who at the time he was 17, uh, because his family was well connected and there were uh, uh, some other connections that would imply maybe there was some kind of a political favor done that charges were dropped. And there was such outrage over this article. So many blogs picked it up. Alternative media. We talked about it. So many other shows talked about it. There was a determination made that they were going to reopen the case, essentially assign a special prosecutor and see why were the charges dropped. Let's explore this further. Now there have been some stories done on corporate media about this. And Fox News did a story and I'm actually not blaming Fox News on this one. It just happens that it was on Fox News where they invited a defense attorney, uh, Joseph De Benedetto, to comment on this. And all I have to tell you, I'm going to play the video. All I have to tell you is he starts off a sentence with I'm not saying she deserved to be raped, but anytime a sentence starts that way, my ears go up. I'm interested. Let's take a look at the video. Lawyer Joseph DiBenedetto is a criminal defense attorney who's live with us in studio this afternoon and has some of his own thoughts on this. Joseph, nice to see you. Good to see you, Chef. You said you've done these cases all the time and you, and you got your finger on this. Without a doubt. I mean, at first blush, th there's, there's no denying that from the surface it appears to be some sort of cover up. But when you look at the finer details, there are telltale signs of this girl actually lying. She is leaving her home at 1 a.m. in the morning. And, and nobody forced her to drink. And what happens? She gets caught by her mom. She's embarrassed. And, and the easy way out here is, mom, someone took advantage of me. But what did she expect to happen at 1 a.m. in the morning after sneaking out? I'm not saying, assuming that these facts are accurate and this did happen, I'm not saying that she deserved to be raped. But knowing the facts as we do here, including what the prosecutor has set forth, this case is going nowhere and it's going nowhere quick. So what do you think, Lewis? It's it's again the same type of thing where we're not saying she deserved to be raped, but she did sneak out of the house. She uh, lied and she was she was out late. She was drinking or whatever the case was. Uh, every time I hear this, I always think the same thing, which is what about the person who raped her? Did they listen? I'm not saying that uh, that that they, they didn't go that they did so, that they didn't do something wrong by raping her, but she did sneak out of the house. Right. If you flip this around, it makes no sense at all to say things like this. Right. Here's the thing. If if this defense attorney truly believed that she was not raped at all, he wouldn't need to start uh, coming up with with things like, well, she snuck out of the house. Well, she had been drinking. Uh, and remember, Lewis, this, this, this isn't this isn't uh, the, the defense attorney for the 17 year old. It's just a defense attorney, which makes right. it even more outrageous. Right. I mean, if he that makes it even less sense then. Yeah. But if if he even if her defense attorney, if anyone needs to say needs to bring up what she was doing that night. Right. And things she shouldn't have been doing if they truly believed that she did not get raped at all. They wouldn't need to question her uh, her moral standing or her uh, intentions that night. And every time I hear these things, I don't know what you and our audience uh, think when you hear these. I'm not saying she deserved it, but and then you hear something about the way typically the woman was dressed or where she was or what time of day it was. Why isn't the first question? Why did the rapist rape? Right. Because is is it really the case where it's simply a matter of clothing, whether whether somebody is unable to control themselves from raping a woman or not? Is that really the type of society we're in? It's absurd to me that this is the type of conversation that happens repeatedly. Why was she in this location? Why was she wearing this? She did tell a lie lying to your mom about what you're doing or whoever it was she lied to that somehow equates to it being less bad that somebody allegedly raped her. I will never understand this. The first question should always be, what if the rapist hadn't raped? And I don't think that there's any question that should be asked before that.
That is a valid question. And, and we'll see what happens with this case. I mean, I think the important thing here is that there should have been a trial, right? I mean, is it possible that this guy didn't do it? Sure, I guess that is possible, but there wasn't a trial and there definitely should have been. Absolutely, we need the trial and uh, we're gonna continue following the story as we have been. After the break, we will have a debate between a conservative Christian and a progressive Christian. I think you're going to like this. I encourage you to stay with us here and check out the membership special at davidpackman.com slash shutdown back after this.